Welcome back to What the Flick. I'm Matt, that's Christy, that's Alonzo. Uh, there are a whole bunch of trailers out, uh, which Alonzo's mad because we normally tell him <laughs> he normally doesn't I like don't to watch like trailers. To watch them, I don't like, either. I try it, to avoid them. Yeah, as you know, Roger Ebert always said, like the trailers are the movie that they want you to think you're going to see. Yes. Right. And I, would, I, I much prefer going in cold. But well, unfortunately, you, we're making watch you watch them. them. Yes. Because we're going to talk about them. Uh, first up, uh, the latest from Marvel, uh, or not latest, but. If you can't get enough Marvel superheroes, uh, you're in luck because- How many more are there? <laughs> it's a deep bench. Don't ask questions, you don't know the answers bench. to, Christy. Uh, Cloak and Dagger are getting their own television show. No, this is not the Dabney Coleman movie. Uh, this is Cloak and Dagger, uh, two teenagers uh, who end up with superpowers. Uh, but they have to be together. They have them. to be together. Uh, and uh, you know, this is kind of an interesting trailer. We'll take a look right now. I feel like I have to be perfect. Like I have to do everything right. I go the other way. I run away from everything. I've had a lot of things taken from me. And everything I have, I've had to steal. There's something about fear that pushes me. That was my whole life. Whenever anything goes wrong, I hightail it out of town. <laughs> I think we need to talk. Wow. So... <laughs> I never read this comic. I've never I, even heard of this. I did read this comic. <laughs> this comic is nutso because the comic, the original comic launches, it's like Marvel's like War on Drugs comic. And oh it's boy. these two teenagers that get this bad batch of drugs from Pusher and it gives them superpowers or it somehow, <laughs> we lay, they later retcon and Kids, say- Kids, don't do drugs, yeah, exactly. you'll get superpowers. Well, you'll get it's really, awesome. <laughs> but really problematic superpowers because uh, Cloak, be, so the way it works is, and they later retcon to say, oh, well, it activated their mutant genes. And so God, now they're uh, mutants. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm. Because everybody's got to be a mutant. Uh, Cloak ends up being part of this thing called the Dark Force <coughs> and can teleport, but he also needs to feed off of Dagger's energy. She's got this white light. She can throw like light, daggers of light that. It's, it's got all this vaguely churchish reference into it, and mm -hmm. it becomes this weirdly, like, kind of almost, not almost, like racially problematic thing that like, oh, the black boy's feeding off the white girl. And it, and it, they it seem is, to have stripped that out of well, this. And it is interesting in this that like the, 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 the black kid is clearly like from an upscale family right. and well to do and, and the white girl is the one who is, you know, poor and on the run and that kind of thing, which is a switch of the usual trope they would right. do in a show like this. But so they're not Wonder Twins. They're not, not Wonder so Twins. It's not like Marvel's version of Wonder Twins. No, no. no. But they need each other. Their they, powers. So it's yeah, they're symbiotic. Yeah. Uh, you know, do they fight crime? Well, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I don't know. They could well, do a lot I th of things. I think the I bad guess. guy is right. There's a there's a quick flash of the Roxxon Oil Company sign in this trailer, and that's sort of they, they've popped up in the in the Defenders universe as like you know right. they're bad news. So right. and 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 an oil company being a bad guy in a Louisiana set show is a cool idea. Oh For the yeah. Tax I mean, breaks, if nothing like else. the last couple. <laughs> years, listen, the last couple of years you've had Thor and and the. Asgard gods taking on Roxxon, this, this, yeah. this fake Exxon. So this, that's the, one of the big bads. Um, and I have to answer, don't we all in some way fight crime? Come on. I don't. Don't we? Don't we don't fight the crime movies. of bad movies, I'm, I'm here to tell you. We're trying. All right, uh, next up, uh, a trailer for a documentary that has been shown, I believe it's Sundance, yes. right? And then also showed at South by Southwest this last week that by all reports, everyone was bawling their eyes out. Mm -hmm. This is the documentary about Mr. Rogers and his, or Fred Rogers and his work on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Uh, it's called Won't You Be My Mother. Neighbor. neighbor, I'm sorry. <laughs> Won't you be my neighbor? It's sorry. a sequel to Mother. No. <laughs> Won't you be my neighbor? Sorry. If you take all of the elements that make good television and do the exact opposite, you have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star. Yet, it worked. Hello. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. He was always trying to get a message across in every show. A week on death. What does assassination mean? A divorce. Some people get married and after a while they're so unhappy that they don't want to be married anymore. He was radical. I know everyone says that, but he was radical. I'm dying to see this movie. I want to cry uh, just watching the trailer. I know. <laughs> I, I could have seen this at Sundance, and I'm kicking myself that I didn't. Uh, Morgan Neville, who directed 20 Year Feet from Sardom, but also Best of Enemies, which we liked a lot, mm -hmm. the, the movie about the Gore Vidal, William Buckley debates at the 68 uh, conventions. Yes. 
Uh, you know, and, and we showed that at Outfest, and he said, oh, yeah, I'm working on a documentary with Mr. Rogers. I was like, I want to see that right now. Yes, yeah. yes. That's I, the summer. There's also there's a Tom Hanks feature film in right. production about right. Mr. Rogers as well, which is called something else. Won't you be my mother? <laughs> no, I think <laughs> so. Uh, that, that title's too good to right. waste. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm really excited to see this. You know, when you start digging into Fred Rogers' history and... And what he said, I mean, he did exactly what he set out to do, which, you know, he initially, he was going to seminary, uh, he's a Presbyterian, or was a Presbyterian minister, right. and was going to seminary, and then gets distracted by television, and he would later say, yeah, I got into TV because I hated what I was seeing. And he thought there was this great possibility with this new medium, and you see him work that out as you watch the show. It's fascinating. I'm really, really, really excited to see this movie. Yeah, the, the way that he was able to like look at the camera and make and make let kids think he was talking to them directly, mm -hmm. uh, but was always so affirming and so kind and generous and could teach kindness and generosity in a way that didn't feel squicky. Uh, he, there's just nobody like him. You Are My Friend is the name of the Tom Hanks movie. Ah, got it. All right, now we were gonna review a different trailer or talk about a different trailer, but we had a late substitution based on your recommendation. You're gonna be very happy that I suggested this one because this movie looks amazing. This trailer is bonkers. Yes. What the name of the movie? You wanna bring us? It is called Under the Silver Lake. It is from David Robert Mitchell who did It Follows and The Myth of the American Sleepover, both amazing movies. Take a look at his latest. Come on in. <laughs> I saw you spying on me earlier. No, it wasn't. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good. out in the middle of the night nothing strange about it she wanted to leave how does that not make sense i don't understand why she didn't tell me maybe she didn't like you maybe she knows you're poor and haven't paid your rent you found some kind of code or like secret message in her apartment it means to stay quiet our world I love this filmmaker. He makes these movies that are so rich in their sense of place, and yet there's something kind of off kilter about them that like puts you on edge from the very beginning. And this, to me, looks like a very dark version of The Big Lebowski. Mm. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, uh, totally. It's a good in. LA movie, the, solid. The, LA my movie. one qualm is that like it's literally a manic pixie dream girl. <laughs> no, but, but she <laughs> might not be. But uh, she might. You don't she know. She might not be. I don't know. But in, in, either way, she's a manic pixie real girl. Either way. But no, you're right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I like his stuff so far. I love the fact that Riley Keogh is giving mm -hmm. like full on Marilyn Monroe in the mm -hmm. never used footage from Something's Got to Give. You know, oh. the whole leg up on the pool. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't even picked that up. Yeah, there's a lot of like film references all throughout. Yeah. Yes, it's a good LA. So all right, let's movie. see, let's yes. see how it goes. Sure. All right, we got to take another quick break. Uh, when we come back, we've got some news uh, about uh, things in uh, Steven Spielberg's orbit and maybe a new Matrix. Uh, we'll talk about it when we get back. <laughs> 